So if you have the files downloaded, um, when you open up the lesson two folder, you have a few program a, a few example programs in a folder. There's a short video to demonstrate one of the example programs. And then we have the lesson plan and the slides. So just a reminder of what files you're receiving this week. So looking at the lesson plan for lesson two, lesson two is titled Panda's Greeting. And in lesson two, this is a 45 minute lesson and it's also uh, targeted for your beginner um, learner. And as a reminder, the lessons are structured with objectives. It provides an overview. It aligns to national standards as well as gives you a pre-lesson checklist. And then all of the lesson activities go through as you go through the lesson. So there's a warm up. There's different types of guided instruction or independent practice. And then there is a wrap up at the end with a short assessment piece, usually with each lesson. So lesson two takes us from learning what a program was in lesson one, and now we're going to write those programs. We're gonna write some programs um, using our block-based programming language in block, which we got familiar with last week. We're also going to learn that we can use Mblock to communicate a story. So there's a storytelling piece that's going to come at, into play this lesson. And then we're going to learn to distinguish between blocks that may appear similar but have slightly different function. And then we're also going to be able to add a background to our Mblock project. Um, so we're going to continue to use our library and we're going to look at different ways to combine our programming blocks. And one key in this lesson is a sequential program. Our blocks are going to play in a sequence and we will get to choose what sequence we want our blocks to be executed in. And that's really important. We're going to again di differentiate between similar programming blocks and tell a story and bring it to life. And then a key component of this lesson at the end is a peer feedback activity, which we'll go over in a moment. So again, as we work through, I just wanna remind you that I'm going to be wearing a couple different hats. At times, I'm going to be um, talking to you as though you are learners and I am the teacher. And at times, I'm going to be giving you teacher tips and talking to you as though you were the teacher. So just keep in mind that I'll be switching back and forth and inter um, interweaving teaching tips throughout this lesson. So did we get any answers in our chat about what is a program? Let's see, hold on. My chat window is not visible. Yeah, we got one. It's uh, a program can be used to make a machine perform a specific task. We did learn that last week, that programming, we used it for mobile apps. It could be used for hardware. Um, another definition of a program is it's a set of instructions. It's a set of instructions that are executed by a computer or by hardware, and it's going to perform some sort of specific task. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this lesson. We're going to write programs that perform the task that we would like them to write. So as we go through the lesson plan, just a reminder that there are accompanying slides that you have as a teacher or a parent to aid you in teaching this lesson or giving this lesson to your learner. And so I'm going to teach this lesson from the um, slides and then refer back to the lesson plan when we need to talk about something that's not in the slides. So just a reminder, all the teacher tips and behind the scenes are in the lesson plan and the slides are there to present the information. So, here we go. So to review last week, I know I've audibly, I've, I've mentioned this, but it's very helpful to have the visual aid to go along with it. So to review last week, we looked at the, um, let me make this full screen. There we go. Um, we looked at our interface, our M block interface. And across the top was our menu bar. Along the left-hand side where we have our stage and our sprites and our backgrounds, which we're gonna look at in more detail today, is the stage area. The stage area is where we can make our, um, our program full screen so we can just see the program. It's also where we have the green flag and the stop button, the, the start and stop buttons. 
The block area or our block library is where we will find our color coded programming blocks. And along the right hand side is the script area where we drag and drop our programming blocks to build our program. And we're going to definitely build more complex programs today than we did last week. So to remind you, there were a few icons we looked at in the stage. We had um, the green flag and the stop buttons, both start and stop the program, and we learned about making it full screen and exiting full screen. We played a game last week. The game we played was Space Adventure, which was a lot of fun. And with Space Adventure, we got to meet our main character, P Panda. And Panda was a pilot of this spaceship. And he was navigating. And we're going to learn a little bit more about Panda in this lesson. And we'll continue working with Panda for a little bit of the um, first couple of the lessons in the curriculum. So. Actually, it's not in slides. So if we go back to the lesson plan, when we review the space adventure game, what happens is the lesson plan gives you as the instructor the opportunity to explain to students a little bit more about the problem we're going to solve in this lesson. So in lesson one, we looked at space adventures. We met Panda. and. Oftentimes, when you play a video game, there are actually there's a backstory for all of the characters, right? So we're we're used to video games giving us some sort of story or context to the characters that are involved. So here's a little bit more information about Panda that you can share with your learners. Panda is from a is a pilot from a galaxy far, far away. Panda spent many months navigating across many miles of dangerous stars and asteroids and finally arrived at Earth safely. That's what we were doing last week when we played. Unfortunately, Panda isn't able to speak. Panda hopes we can work together to communicate so Panda can say hello and tell us about this amazing trip. So at this time, you would have your learner write a three to four sentence introduction that Panda may say when meeting new friends on Earth. What might that conversation look like? And this is where that storytelling element comes into play with this lesson, is students are going to get to write and imagine what Panda would want to say when Panda learns how to speak to all the new friends on Earth. And let's go back to the slides. So. To go ahead and program this, we're going to create a program that helps Panda speak because we have that ability using programming blocks in MBlock. So we're going to make our Panda speak. Now, something to know when you're in MBlock is that our characters or objects are called sprites. I mentioned that last week, but just want to make sure we understand that term. All of our characters in um in M block are called sprites that's the name that the program gives them we're going to be using a few different programming blocks to program our panda to speak so we learned about the when green flag is clicked block last week but that is the block that allows us to start an event and then all of the blocks the subsequent blocks underneath it will execute when we click the green flag. And then we are going to look at a new category. We're going to look at the looks category in the block area. This will be a new category. It's purple. And we're going to use two looks blocks in this lesson. We're going to use the say hello for two seconds and the say hello. Okay. Would anybody like to in the chat predict the difference between these two blocks? So we will, as we continue through the lesson, observe the difference. But if anybody would like to document their prediction, go ahead and do so in the chat box. You can document what you think the difference between say hello for two seconds is and say hello. It's very helpful when you're working in MBlock to have your students look at the blocks that they're not familiar with and make predictions about what the blocks may do. And then you can demonstrate their function and they can see if their predictions are accurate. So if you haven't done this already, now is a great time to open your MBlock software. If you've installed it, it's on your desktop. 
If you did not install it or you're working from a tablet or a Chromebook, you can go to the web app on the mBlock website. But we're going to go ahead and open the mBlock software and we're going to begin to program our program that allows Panda to make this introduction. So that's what we're going to do. So once you get Panda, once you get the software open, which I have already done, Remember, when you open the program for the first time um, for that day, you're going to have a blank program that already has Panda, the Panda Sprite included. But remember, we start off on the device tab, which is not where we need to be. So the instructions tell us to switch over to the Sprites tab. Switch over to the Sprites tab. And just like last week, I'm going to go ahead and stay in the software, but the slide and the lesson plan does walk you through all of these steps, as you can see. But I'm going to stay in the software and just walk you through the steps um, so you can follow along while watching the software. So the instructions tell us that we're going to begin with a when the green flag is clicked events when the green flag is clicked events. So we are going to go to the block area and go to events. Now your in block might look slightly different than mine. Remember down here in the bottom left corner under our stage, there is an icon that adjusts the size of our stage and the size of our script area. These two icons can be helpful. I prefer when I'm working with you all to be in this view where the stage is a little bit bigger so you can see the details of the stage as well as the details of the script. So we're gonna get the when the green flag is clicked, when the green flag is clicked block. And remember, if, especially if this is your first lesson, you're going to click on the block in the library and just drag it to the script area and let go. And let go. Lesson two has a, some helpful hints for you as the instructor as well as the learner. And one of those is how do you delete a block? I think that's a great thing for us to look at now because I have added two when the green flag is clicked blocks to my script area. And at this time, I do not need two of them. So how do I delete a block? How do I delete a block? Well, a very simple way to delete a block is to click on the block so that you are able to drag it and drop it right back over to the block area or to our library. When you hover over, you will see a trash can appear and your cursor will have a little red X. If you let go, that block is deleted. I'll do that again. So if I drag a block out that I do not need, I, I do not need it any longer, I can click and drag it back into the library and it will be deleted. So we have our when green flag is clicked events. And from there, we're going to add the, the say hello for two seconds block. Now, I said it earlier, that's a new category we haven't looked at yet. And remember, our categories are right here. It's this column alongside our blocks library, and they are color coded. So we're looking at the, we're, we're going to find in this um, column the looks category the looks category, it is a um, deeper purple color. And so when we find it, it's the second one down, we will see our looks blocks. There are multiple different blocks that appear in this category. We will continue to explore the blocks in this category in lessons three and lessons four. For now, the two blocks that we're going to work with are the say hello for two seconds and the say hello block. Let's start with the say hello for two seconds and drop that block over and attach it to our when the green flag is clicked. Now, as a reminder, when you do that, a gray shadow appears, which indicates that I am going to let go and it's going to snap into place. It automatically attaches there for us. So, now what we can do is we can go ahead and watch this 
program play. So to do that, I'm going to click the green flag and I'm going to observe the panda speaking. How long did panda speak? Let's watch that again. If you were counting, the speech bubble that said hello appeared for two seconds. I'll play it one more time. Okay, so I said we're gonna look at two different looks blocks. So let's try the say hello block. So to delete the say hello for two seconds, I'm gonna click and drag it back to the library. And this time I'm going to click and drag say hello over. I'm going to run this program and let's see what happens. Are you counting? Interesting. Hmm. Does anybody want to see if their prediction was correct on what was going to happen when we said hello? What is the two, what is the difference? Did anybody observe a difference between the two programs? So Oscar's saying that this message, the one that's just say hello, stays all the time. Interesting. That's a great observation, Oscar. Flavio says it doesn't stop. Awesome, that's exactly correct. So when we have our say hello for two seconds, the speech bubble appears and it stays on for two seconds and then it disappears. If we use the say hello with nothing else on it, then the speech bubble appears and never goes away. It does not go away unless we tell it to stop. That is a great observation. So what if I wanted my, what if I wanted my panda to say something besides hello? Maybe I wanted to say something besides hello. Well, the great thing about mBlock is we are able to type in all of these little white circles. These white, um, these white circles are a place where we can select and we can change what Panda is saying. And if you change what Panda is saying and then run your program, it will change what appears in the stage area. So as a programmer, you have control. You are able to tell Panda or able to control whatever sprite that you have. In this case, our sprite is Panda. So a couple other helpful hints. We're gonna practice with these say blocks in a moment, but a couple other helpful hints that we wanna look at is how do I move Panda to appear to be in a different space on the stage. Last week, we used the motion blocks to, to program Panda to move, but I don't want to program Panda to animate or move at this time. I just don't want him in the center of the screen. So one way you can do that is on the stage, you can click and drag your sprite to your desired position and it will stay in that location as until a motion block is used to program it to move somewhere else. So you can move your panda around on the stage to change its starting position or position. Obviously that will change if we program a motion to change it like we did last week. But for now we can move panda around in the stage area and place panda wherever we want panda to be. So to continue learning, this is the part of the lesson where the teacher is providing instruction to the learners to just have some basic understanding. Your learner is likely going to want to play. Just remind them that they are going to have an opportunity to make their own complete program, but you want to teach them one more thing. So the one more thing we want to learn is how do we change this background? Because when we were telling our story, we said that Panda arrived on Earth. But right now, I don't see Earth on my stage. I see a white background, okay? 
So we want to change our background from a white background to make Panda feel at home on Earth. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to go to the background tab. That is down on the bottom left underneath our stage. The background tab is right here. And this little plus sign icon, the little plus sign icon allows us to select a background. There are multiple images already included in Mblock. And since we want to help Panda feel at home and feel comfortable, we're gonna choose a background that's similar to where Panda's from. Panda is from outer space. So we're going to explore and see where these might be. Now, when you're in the library, the backdrop library, you can scroll down and there are multiple pages of backgrounds, but there are also these filters across the top and we can choose the space filter right here to go ahead and narrow our results. And we can choose the space three backdrop. If you would like to choose a different backdrop, you are more than welcome to. So now I have Panda in outer space and I can move Panda around on the stage again, wherever I want Panda to be. So the lesson continues after the, these instructions are followed, okay, the lesson continues with an independent practice activity for the learners. The learners are encouraged to try it themselves and they're given this programming practice challenge. So they're going to take the introduction that they wrote in the warm up and they're going to write a program that allows Panda to introduce um, to speak that introduction and to write those three to four sentences that they wrote in the warm up. And then every activity in the lessons is going to, um, when this, the learners are given an independent practice activity, there's extension challenges. So some of your learners might need some additional um, activities, especially if they have extra class time or they just want to continue to learn new features of the software. So the extension challenges for this activity is to add a motion animation to have Panda move across the stage, to add an additional sprite who also introduces themselves, and to change the event to something besides when the green flag is clicked. So if you are looking at the lesson plan, that is also here but the lesson plan gives you the instructor a few examples of what their code might look like so this is a helpful um aspect of the written lesson plan for you as the instructor you are given example code so that you can see an example of what you should expect from your learners and you'll see here that this top example says when the space key is pressed and that is an extension of changing the event to something besides when the green flag is clicked and so you can see here these two examples what I want to do is I want to, at this moment, show you some example code, example programs that came with your files. So when you downloaded lesson two, when you downloaded lesson two, there are two example projects that you are given. The first example project is Panda's Greeting. This is the one we just did together in the lesson, okay? This is the sample project um, so that you as the instructor have the example code. If we were to hit the green flag, this one says hello for two seconds. The other example program is the extension challenge. So this example program, I'm gonna make it bigger for you, is exactly what um, we were, we gave as the example where there are two different sprites and they're going to communicate with each other. 
And you'll see that the example also has a video. And this video, sorry, um, this video plays and Panda, they can't, the, the Panda's friend cannot understand what Panda, say, Panda is saying because Panda didn't speak English in this example. So that's one example of um, the extension project. And you can see that it has two sprites and they are having a conversation or communicating back and forth. Now, one thing we have not done is we haven't saved a program. And the, the lesson plan for lesson two includes instructions. So here it was saying, how do you delete a block? How do you move a sprite from a different place on the stage? Well, the other thing that this lesson teaches us is how do we save a file? So last week, we didn't really need to save any of our work because we just made a very simple program. But in this project, we made a new project that had the say hello and it said when the green flag is clicked. And we made customizations to this project and we want to save it. We also want students to save their independent practice. So how do you save a file? When you have a file that you have worked on and you're ready to save it, there is a save icon on the menu bar. However, that that involves you needing to be logged into an online account. We're actually gonna to go to file, save to your computer. So this is one way to save a file that does not require an account. We will show you um, at the end of today's lesson how to save your file to an account um, in the in the inblock community. But for now, one way to save your file is to go to file, save to your computer. And it's going to give you the um, the, fi the file explorer for whatever uh, operating system you have. And I'm going to save this in my lesson two folder. And I'm going to call this my webinar example. You can call it whatever you'd like. You give a file name and you hit save. Now your file is saved and you will see across the top where it says local file. That means that this file is saved locally on your computer and is not saved in an account in your um, inblock account if you have one. And so that is a way you can save your file. And when I go to my folder, you will see that file is now in my folder and I can double click on it to open it in inblock and it will be there. If you are working on a, um, a Chromebook, for example, where you may not be able to double click, you can also go to file open from your computer file open from your computer and you can find the file that you would like to open and you can open from the mblock software directly. So those are some ways to save and open files in mblock when you're working around that interface. We are going to give you all an opportunity to complete the independent practice activity, but I want to finish out our lesson so you can see where this lesson goes after the learners have an opportunity to practice. So I'm going to open a file. Um, I'm going to open a file that I made earlier today that is a conversation. This is the my, my example independent practice, just so you can see it on the screen. And I have two sprites and they have a conversation and I've added a background and I've moved my sprites where I want them to be. So this is just one example program that I made. And we'll talk about this example in a second. So the lesson plan continues and the lesson plan, once they do their independent practice, they make their program, here's what's going to happen. This is a really important wrap up activity. And so I encourage you to make sure you leave time for this. Peer feedback is a very, very important part of that collaborating and communicating around computing that we talked about in the last lesson 
it also aligns directly to the CSTA national standard, which says seek and incorporate feedback from team members and users to refine a solution that meets user needs. It's a huge part of um, computing as a whole because we make computer programs to serve a purpose, to solve problems, and to have users interact with them. And if your users are having difficulty using your program, your program is not an effective solution. So we want to be able to have students learn to take feedback um, constructive feedback, um, the positives and maybe the challenges or the improvements needed and receive those from their peers as well as if you are um, doing this at home with your learner and it's just you a parent, you as the parent or their siblings or their grandparent can also provide feedback. So this activity is set up where every student puts their project on the screen and places a piece of paper on the desk next to their computer. Okay, and then you have students circulate around the room and they go and they sit down at each other's computers, they run the program and they view and watch and play and interact with whatever the program is. In this case, it's Panda's um, greeting, his introduction. And then you're going to have the students share on the piece of paper one thing they found interesting about the project and one recommendation for improving the project. Okay, so they're going to be writing on the piece of paper that is the, um, the project owner's paper. That paper stays at the desk um, next to that project. And so when the students return back to their seat, they're going to have a sheet of paper with all of their, their classmates or their peers or their parents and sibling um, feedback all in one place on one sheet of paper. And then you'll let them review that feedback, read over it, and you'll facilitate a discussion about what students observed and viewed, um, they observed from viewing the other projects. This is important because oftentimes you'll have a student in your class do something that you have not yet taught and the other students will see it and they'll be like, that was really cool. I really liked how, you know, Sally did this awesome um, animation on her. She had her, her panda like jump up and down when panda was uh, talking, you know, and they can see and learn from each other some cool techniques. And then have them reflect on improvements and changes they would make based on the feedback received. So have them write a few things that they would like to change about their project. If you have the time, you can actually have your students make those improvements to their project and resubmit it. This is a great example of iteration. Iteration is the idea of, um, of improving upon a solution and continuing to re go back to your original solution and improve and then get feedback and then improve and then get feedback and that a solution is not always complete the first time that you submit a program or you complete a program. There's often times to continue a cycle of improvement and to go back to it and continue to add more. If you are working in a, a virtual space, like some of you are right now with the school closures, as well as some of you are doing these lessons at home with just an individual learner, that's where the, the parent or the sibling, just having them provide feedback can be helpful. You can also use a screencast recording website and you can share a video of the, the um, introduction and you can share out your projects that way. And to, Close us out, we'll, we'll come back to sharing the project because I'm gonna show you how to do that. So to close us out and you can answer these questions in the chat, which block area does hello for two seconds and say hello belong to? Which part of the block area will we find these blocks? If anybody wants to share an answer in the chat. We've got lots of answers for B. It looks like B, thank you. I can't for some reason get my chat open. B, looks, great, perfect. We got that one. Which of the following programs can make Panda successfully introduce itself? A, B, C, or D? Let 
And we've got some coming in. We've got D. D is correct. So one great thing about this slide that can be really helpful when you're teaching this in your classroom is you can, it's, um, you want your students to learn to um, debug, which is to identify problems and then identify ways to solve problems in code. And so you can actually have your students write down and explain what is wrong with A, B, and C. So for example, A. A is missing an event block. There is no block there that, that um, starts the sequence of the blocks playing, the sequence, the sequential execution will not happen because there's no event that triggers it. And we will learn more about event triggering in a future lesson. And B, when the green flag is clicked, nothing is going to happen because nothing is attached to it. Um, there, those blocks are not attached. And the same is for C. And we can see with the, um, we can observe in the option D that they are attached. So that one will run correctly. And we learned how to save in this, in this lesson. And so if we want to save our file, we will find the file button in which part of our interface, which part of our interface. So the correct D? Go ahead. Yeah, we're correct seeing D. answer is D. Correct. The correct answer is D, the menu bar. Remember that part across the top of our screen is our menu bar. So we skipped over a few things in this lesson as you as the students would get to do, which is to work on that independent practice. So here is your challenge before Thursday. We would like to encourage you to program an introduction for Panda to have a conversation with one of the new friends that Panda meets while on Earth, okay? So this is the activity. You're gonna write a program that has Panda using the say blocks. And if you would like to use the extension challenges, you can add a motion, you can add an additional sprite, or you can change the event that triggers it. To give you an example, I wrote a program that has two sprites, Panda and this cameraman. Each sprite has its own program and they both are triggered by the space key. Okay, so I encourage you to write your own program. Now, one thing we're gonna be doing with this STEAM on board curriculum is we're going to be sharing our files through the mBlock community. And we have not yet shown you the mBlock community. So I wanna take a moment to show you the mBlock community and teach you how to create an account so that you can share your files, okay? So when you are on the mBlock website, and um, we can put that link in the chat for you to get you a direct um, link to the mBlock website. The mBlock website is where you downloaded mBlock for the first time, most likely. Or if you wanted to use the web interface, you could do that by clicking the Create Now button and you would be taken to the web-based app for um, mBlock. But we're going to head over to the community page. This link along the top takes us to the community page. Okay, now I am currently logged in, so I can actually log out so I can show you what that looks like. When you are on the mBlock community page, you will see that this is a place to explore programs that other users of mBlock have shared. So as a reminder, mBlock is an international, it's a global um, software program used all around the world. So it's really neat to see that programs are gonna be uploaded from all around the world, but you can begin to explore programs. Now we have not yet looked at in depth how mBlock can control hardware, but you can see some example programs here that are using some of the MakeBlock um, robots and hardware. 
but you'll see on the community page that you can share your programs, okay? So we would love for you as a participate in the Make Block Steam On Board lessons to create, um, to sign up for an in-block community account. Now, if you are here, you can um, use the Google Plus, um, you can link it to your Google account, which is how I've done it. Um, but you can just sign up for an account. It's going to ask you a few different questions. It's going to verify your age, et cetera. And you will be able to sign up for an account. When you sign up for an account, you can in your mBlock software, when you are in mBlock, in the top right hand corner, you can log into that account as well. So your mBlock software that is installed on your computer can log into your account. Now I already have mine linked to my Gmail account, my Google account. And so my avatar changes and now I am logged into my community account. Some benefits of having a mBlock community account is that your um, projects can sync. You can save your projects in the cloud to your account. And no matter what um, computer you go onto and access mBlock, if you log into your account, your projects that are saved in the cloud will be there. So now instead of choosing file open from your computer and save to your computer, you can use the open and the save icons. So if I go to open, these are all of the projects that I have saved online in my account, okay? And so I can open projects that are saved in my cloud, my community account with mBlock, and I can save them back to my online account as well. So I can open those projects and I can save those projects virtually in the cloud. So for some of you, this might be helpful if you use multiple different devices, um, but your account is here. Also, when you are logged in in mBlock, you can go and view your profile on the community page. So when you create a, a community account, you have a profile. And your profile allows you to share and store your files. Now, I have five projects in my account, and only three of them are shared publicly. So there's a way to filter out which projects are shared and which projects are not. And you can see that there. You can also favorite other people's projects, other users' projects, as well as follow other users. We'll explore more features of the community as we go through. And when I am in my community account, I can look at the project that I just made and I can choose to share this project publicly. So when you are on a project page, this right now allows me to view the project, but you, since this is your own project, you can click edit project and you can add a title, you can provide an introduction. So I can say in this project, Panda is camping. Panda's friend is going to take photos of Panda in front of the mountains. Okay, and this is where your students can practice that storytelling as well. And you can provide instructions to the user of how to control the program. In this case, my event is the space key. And when I hit share, you do need to check that you agree to the community guidelines. And when I hit share, it will update those descriptions. And this is now shared publicly. And now any of you can go find my account on mBlock and you can go and view this project. So I can actually, if I can get my chat box to open, which I'm not really sure why it's not, um, I can share this URL in the chat box. Um, there we go. So I can share that URL and you can open that file on your computer and you can like it. So when you're on a file that, um, 
when you're on a file that you uh, are viewing and you want to like it, you can hit the favorite um, and you can, you can choose to favorite or like the example. So I'm going to go to another project in the community um, that somebody else has made. Let me go to this one. And when you're on a project, you can, I, I cannot edit this project because it's not mine. So you'll see that the edit is missing, but I can like the project and, um, and favorite that project. So it's a pretty cool way that you can explore other projects that um, people have made. Now this one uses the microphone, which I'm not gonna turn on right now. And now, um, what I wanna do is I wanna show you the last step. So with the STEAM on board, we are inviting you to share your projects. We're inviting you to share any projects that you make while we work through these lessons together. So when you are on the community page, if you go down to the bottom, there is the Make Block STEAM on board curated studio. A studio in MBlock is a collection of in-block projects that are um, similar or a or are, are um, the same type of project. So we're going to go to the Make Block Steam on Board Studio, and we can also put that link in the comment. I mean, in the chat for you as well, and that'll be in the chat. And when you are on this studio, you are able to add your Steam on Board project. And you can see that I have already added my Panda Speaking project to this studio. So how do you do that? Once you create an account and you have saved your project in your account, and then you have shared your project to make it public, you can go to your project page, you can go to your project page, and you have a URL at the top. You have a URL at the top. You can copy that. And when you go to the studio and you add a project, you're going to paste that link right into that block. And when you hit contribute, your project will show up in this studio. And it's a neat way for all of us participating in these lessons or watching the videos on YouTube to share the projects that we're making. And we can see all the really cool creativity and examples that um, everyone participating is making. So I encourage you, I encourage you to try this challenge, try the challenge in lesson two, make your first complete project in Inblock, program Panda to um, have a conversation or to say an introduction to one of the new friends that Panda meets on Earth, and then share your project to the, M the Make Block Steam on Board Studio. And this will be a great place to have all of those great projects that everyone is working on in one place so we can see each other's projects. And um, hopefully we'll get to showcase some of those projects as we move along in these webinars. We'll be able to pull up some of your example projects and share those out with all the participants and showcase some of the neat things that you all are learning. Next week, not next week, next, next webinar is Thursday. We're coming back together on Thursday where we're going to look at lesson three. We're going to continue exploring the different programming blocks in MBlock. We're going to begin, um, continue looking at some of the looks blocks in MBlock, and we're going to see how we can um, have our sprites transform. There's lots of really neat blocks in MBlock that let you transform your sprite, and so that's what we're going to do on Thursday. Um, I thank you for following along with us 